Good afternoon and welcome to the Chart of the Week video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Wednesday the 19th of February 2020 and the time has just gone 12.25 GMT. And this week's Chart of the Week is silver. And if you take a look at the price action in the last few months, we can see since mid-December onwards, it's been a fairly decent upward trend. Uh, we had a surge into the middle or early-ish January. Uh, when the US Iran tensions were quite high, the market cooled uh, and it now seems to be pushing higher yet again. Uh, in fact, today we've hit a level uh, last seen in around early January itself, but we're still well off the highs that were achieved in early January um, on the back of those uh, political political tensions. Um, if you take a look at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, we can see that there's been a swing to positive momentum and momentum and, and the positive momentum um, is actually increasing so therefore we can see we can be more more confident that the um, this upward trend is going to continue the underlying market's moving higher positive momentum is, is increasing so it's fair to say for the time being the control is with the bulls so if we do press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting in around 18 spot 50 and a move beyond that could take us toward the highs of early january in around 18 spot 85 and if you go beyond that, we could then head towards 19 spot zero. And it's, it's only really, and then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the highs of early September in around 19 spot 65. Now, there are the potential price areas of resistance, uh, obviously looking towards the upside. If we do see uh, a pullback in, uh, in the silver market, we could see fresh buyers out of the fall because in the last few weeks and kind of wider months, uh, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy with some traders. So if we do look to drift lower from here, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play in around 17, spot 70. We can see on a few occasions that recently that metric acted as support. Uh, also, this area acted as support as well, the 100-day moving average, and that comes into play a bit below that at 17, spot 52. Uh, if metrics have been important in the past, it makes them more likely they will be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. Um, the point at which you might get a be you might become a bit concerned that the upper trend has come to an end is if you take out this level here, the lows of late January, in around 17 spot 33. If you take uh, take out that level, that could be a sign. You know what? The kind of more recent bullish move has come to an end, and uh, it could send us back down towards this zone here, in around 17 spot two, or perhaps even actually 17 spot zero zero itself. Now, if you are going to be trading silver, I would recommend keeping an eye on what's going on in gold, uh, because one of the tenets of Dow theory is that the averages must confirm each other. And what that essentially means is that markets that are fairly similar or have a high correlation that tend to move in the same direction. If silver is pushing higher, you'd like to see something happen. You'd like to see a similar move being replicated in the gold market. Therefore, you can be more confident that both markets are going to continue on that pace. Conversely, if, both, if silver is moving lower, you'd like to see gold moving lower. But it's when the markets are in moving in the opposite direction, diverging, that's when you can be a bit less sure of that of that of that um, of that particular move. So I just mentioned about how silver is pushing higher. We can see here on the gold market that's certainly pushing higher. In fact, gold isn't too far away from the highs that were achieved in early January on the back of the U.S. Iran tensions. And if you do press on higher from here. We're not too far away because we're currently on gold around 1608, 1609. The highs were in around in January. The highs were in around 1611. I would suggest if you do a break beyond the highs of January, um, that could be a very um, bullish indicator, not only for gold but also for silver. Because if you take out the highs of January on gold, that will then put us back to levels last seen in early 2013. So it is uh, worth, your, worth your while keeping an eye on other markets, uh, even if you're just focused on silver itself. Um, lastly, uh, I will point out that today the Fed Reserve minutes will be released from the from the meeting uh, in January, where rates were kept on, on hold. The details will be published at 1900 hours GMT. To be honest, it's, it's not it's not overly likely to 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 be to inject much volatility into the financial markets, but it could. Uh, traditionally, there's been an inverse relationship between the strength of the US dollar and, and, the, strength, and the strength of gold and silver. Uh, that hasn't been so much the case recently. The highs we're seeing in gold and the highs we're seeing in silver, silver has, 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 uh, has occurred in the, in the last few sessions, despite the fact 
the US dollar are strong. So that old correlation for the time being, or inverse, inverse correlation, may not, um, may not be uh, applicable, but it is worth your while keeping an eye on what the Fed said uh, nonetheless. Uh, thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.